shoes with JJ because I realized they gave me the square ones. Oh. So he was willing JJ to... JJ snuck around and saw me. Oh, really? Yeah. He went, I also sent him up to your room this morning. Why? Because I told him to come to Will's room, but the numbers were the same, just backwards, so I sent <laughs> him the room. he didn't come in. Oh, he didn't? That's good. No. How That's could good. he come in? Well, if he opened the that door was... and he thought I was there. Oh. I'm sweating my pants <laughs> off. Are you? It's not bad right here. Luckily, we're going to be in the shade right there. Oh, it looks so pretty. <laughs> Look at all of it. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> how's, how's your dad doing? Good, I think. Yeah. Have you seen your dad? Uh-huh. How is he doing? I'm trying really hard not to cry. <laughs> I, I was standing over there and then standing over here, and I felt it coming on a few times. Yeah? Yeah. Have you cried Just yet? waiting. 
We're at, your note had me going a little bit. Sorry, the note sucks, but... I no, it's pretty good. No, no, I just have us that, but <laughs> bows are good. Yeah. We had a, we had a lot of peep, peepers up here. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, see them up there? Yeah, <laughs> they're new. <laughs> your mom was up here. <laughs> they had the phones going. Oh, <laughs> oh there they go. Other guys? No, that, well, Joey came out this window right before you came out and was yelling down. I, I gave him the finger. Oh. <laughs> I got a ticket in my hand to you. I'm canceling all my plans for you. Don't know where we're going, what we're gonna do. Got a ticket in my hand to you. Cause I'm thinking, maybe we got something. Maybe we got something. Maybe we got something good. Maybe we got something. Maybe we got something. I know we got something. Good. Something good Something good Something good So I'm playing all my cards for you And I'm shooting for the stars and you You're already in my heart So what do I got to lose? I'm playing all my cards for you Yeah, I'm thinking Maybe we got something Maybe we got something Maybe we got something good Maybe we got something Maybe we got something I know we got something good Okay, that totally caught me. <laughs> what, you are stunning, Bailey. Absolutely stunning. And Shane, you're super handsome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for being here to help celebrate Shane and Bailey. What a magnificent venue. I mean, this it couldn't be any more beautiful, really. For those of you that don't know me, I am Wendy, Bailey's aunt the younger sister to the most beautiful mother of the bride, Carol. I know it's hard to believe, as we look nothing and sound nothing alike. <laughs> <laughs> I am very thankful to Shane and Bailey and very honored to be officiating today. Thank you. Born as a preemie, when I first laid eyes on you, I thought how tiny and fragile you were. Holy smokes. Sorry, tissue wasn't supposed to be there. But you thrived. As early as a toddler, if you gave her a vacuum or a hockey stick, get out of her way. This holds true today. Bailey, I've watched you blossom into a thoughtful, compassionate, hardworking, and lovely young lady. When I first met Shane, one Christmas afternoon many years ago, I observed such a kind, composed young man. You embraced everyone in our home with cookies and conversation, taking the time to get to know and really talk with all of us was just, it was beautiful. Learning more about Shane and his childhood, the words competitive on the ice came up a lot. <laughs> I see a theme here, marriage and the ice. The beginning of your relationship 
is the calm and beauty of stepping onto the untouched ice. That first sound of the blade pushing against the ice stirs something inside which gives you momentum forward. Bailey and Shane, you two have grown up skating. You can most likely communicate with one another without speaking on the ice. Sometimes one can communicate better than the other and you can learn from each other to skate more fluidly. Life is fluid, ever-changing, filled with challenges, happiness, and love. Communication on and off the ice is the foundation of a marriage. Navigating the in and out of obstacles, getting too close to the edge, pushing yourself to do it all, skating on thin ice. Sometimes we need to pause and resurface. Take a deep breath. Listen to nature and more importantly to each other as you glide into life together. On the ice you can find yourselves in sync side by side. On the ice you can find yourselves in sync side by side veering off independently on your own, challenging yourself and each other. You will be there if the other falls. Extend the hand to get up. If you're going backwards, the other will be your eyes to guide you in the right direction. This sounds beautiful on the ice, but more so in a marriage. You're already extending your hands to each other as a symbol of your support as you share your promise with one another. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Home is where you are loved wholly and unconditionally, without barriers, restrictions, judgments, or expectations. Home is where you are most comfortable being your absolute self, where you are treasured and celebrated for the unique flaws and quirks that make you authentically you. Shane, you have felt like home from the very beginning. And while that feeling of home has evolved into something so much greater over the past eight years, the roots are why we stand here today. I feel like the luckiest person in the world to be standing by your side and call you home. Okay. Shane, you are sensitive, kind, compassionate, smart, hardworking, funny, and humble. I love that you let me push you outside of your comfort zone and how you help me be a better person. I love that you are active and passionate about your hobbies and are good with kids. I love the way you are patient with me, and I'm thankful to you for listening to my stories, even when they drag on. <laughs> I love the way we cook in our tiny kitchen together and have made Friday's frozen pizza nights. I love the way that we share similar values and that family is so important to both of us. I'm so excited for forever with you, and I look forward to growing a family of our own one day. I promise to laugh with you, support you, be honest always, and to love you unconditionally. I promise to continue to hide my piles of clothes on my side of the bed, <laughs> and to refrain from vacuuming when you're trying to nap, and to always eat dessert with you. As you know, I am a hugger. I love you, and I promise to hug you today and forever. Bailey, from the first moment I met you sophomore year at Assumption College, I knew you were the one for me. You have been my best friend ever since. When competitive hockey came to an end for me, it was like a void in my life. Not long after that, I met you, and it was the biggest blessing I could ever ask for. You not only helped me fill that void, but you also made me realize I could be so much more. You filled me with more joy, hope, and happiness than I could ever know. Then, it didn't take long for me to realize just how special you are when you so effortlessly met my family for the first time and they all learned that you loved th and loved that you were a hugger. <laughs> Throughout our journey over the years and continuing on to our cozy little place in Norwood, 
I have been reminded just how much I love you for your ability to push me, care for me, and most of all, have fun with me. <laughs> I vow to always do the same for you and to always give you my best because that is what you've always done for me. I love that you can take me outside of my comfort zone, <laughs> even though it can be a struggle sometimes. <laughs> I love that even though we have some differences, that's exactly what makes us so great together. And lastly, I love that we will always fight for one another because that is a trait we both share so limitlessly. So, I promise to grow with you and build you a better life each day as we learn from each other to be patient, <laughs> kind, giving, and to always cherish each day together. Oh, and to give you endless back rubs and scratches. <laughs> I promise you my unconditional love, tenderness, and underlying devotion to never ask you to be more than you are and to love you for being you. I promise to be the man that I see now in your eyes, today, tomorrow, and for always. I love you. We didn't cheat, I promise. <laughs> I told you. Oh my God, it's crazy. Do you, Shane? Take Bailey to be your lawfully wedded wife. You say that louder. Yeah. I do. <laughs> the, mic, the mic wasn't pointed it towards wasn't. me anymore. <laughs> do you, Bailey, take Shane to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. Sorry. What's that? I, that, was, that was perfect. Shane's Uncle Kenny De Silva would like to share a few words. Get ready for the Ken facts, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's going to be a common theme here. Um, and please indulge me. It's not as long as you think. Um, normally I have a way with words, but in an event like this, it's kind of difficult for me. Um, again, good evening, ev everyone, and what a joyous day today is. We have just witnessed two very special people become one, husband and wife. And I know there are people looking down on this right now that are filled with joy as the two of you become one. Um, a few months ago, Shane and Bailey asked me if I would say a few words. And I said, of course. And I was filled with joy. And it was just an honor to talk about these two fabulous people. Um, so I said yes. And I figured, OK, they're going to come back to me with what I need to say. You know, They both went to Assumption. So this is going to be good. Well. I finally reached out to him. I said, all right, what do you guys want me to do? And he said, well, you have free reign. And anyone that knows me knows that is not a good thing. <laughs> so immediately I went to my wife and I told my wife, I said, Ray, I have free reign. And my wife had these words, keep it short. <laughs> so <laughs> when I first met Shane, Shane was one years old. He was a happy joyous baby, always playing. Um, and soon, I was co-opted by the Benjamins, and life revolved around two things. Revolved around hockey, which is a common theme, and the boys, two unbelievable boys um, that our whole world revolved around. Um, yeah, huh? I need it. Nope, I got it right here. We're good. So soon we started going to hockey games. Shane was five and he started playing competitively. And then next thing you know, he's seven and we're going to games in New England and we're going to games in Canada. And again, everything revolved around hockey. And Shane learned some valuable lessons in hockey. He learned to be a team player. He learned what it meant to give him himself to others. That's evident by some of his ushers who were on his team from when he was little, since he was seven years old. Right? There's a bond, and he knows what it is to have a commitment to something. His commitment's going to continue, and it's going to continue with Bailey. And now he's formed a team. It's the Shane and Bailey team. And Bailey's no different than Shane. She also played sports, and she's no, she knows what it's like to be a team player. She knows what it's like to give of herself. 
the one thing that um, the first time I met Bailey was uh, quite an interesting event. <laughs> so I tend to give them a, the girlfriends and boyfriends of my nieces and nephews a hard time. Um, it's just me. Um, so all of a sudden, Bailey comes in and Shane goes to introduce me. And what does Bailey do? She gives me a hug. <laughs> the one thing that I cherish amongst my nieces and nephews when we see each other is a good hug. And Bailey, she just wore me down. From that point on, Bailey was part of the family. And I hoped that this day would come, and it has come. I also learned from Bailey's mom that Bailey is a hugger. And a good hug goes a long way in not only life, but in marriage. And that's one thing that you need to remember to give each other every single day is a good hug. There's another story I want to talk about, Shane, and it's his trustworthiness. So we lived down the street from Shane growing up as a young boy, and the neighborhood was filled with kids. And another one of his, eight, his ushers over here, JJ, was our next door neighbor. So one day, Auntie Ree's out in the yard, and all of a sudden Shane and JJ come around the corner, and she looks up, and they're standing there. And they've got this look on their face like something's up. So Shane looks at Auntie and goes, Auntie, we just put a baseball through your window. <laughs> That's Shane, honest. And honesty is another hallmark that you need in marriage that both of you had for each other. Although, talking with JJ last night, <laughs> we're going to have to revisit this because JJ's comment about the game was, it would have never happened if Shane hit the ball. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> So now as I started looking at the reading and what I was going to do, I looked at a religious reading. You know, they both went to Assumption, so why not? So I thought of Genesis. And those of us that are older probably heard Genesis when we got married. And it revolves around a man and a woman in a rib. And I'm not going to use that one because I want to keep my rib. <laughs> All right. So what we ended up coming up with, it's called the art of marriage. And I think it's fitting for this time. So I'm going to read this one so I get it right. And it goes, happiness in marriage is not something that just happens. A good marriage must be created. In the art of marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say I love you at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is at no time taking the other for granted. The courtship should not end with the honeymoon. It should continue through all the years. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together, facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers in the whole family. It is doing things for each other and not in the attitude of duty or sacrifice but in the spirit of joy. It is speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It is not looking for perfection in each other. It is cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It is having the capacity to forgive and forget. It is giving each other an atmosphere which we can grow. It is finding room for the things of the spirit and is the common search for the good and beautiful. It is establishing a relationship which the independence is equal dependence, is mutual, and the obligation is reciprocal. It is not only marrying the right partner, it's being the right partner. And it is discovering what marriage can be at its best. So, as I close, I told you it wouldn't be that long, um, I just want to say to Bailey and Shane that we all love you very much. This is now your extended family. The Benjamins, the Morgans, the Majors, the Palmers, and all those that watched you grow up since birth, your extended family. We will always be here for you during good times and bad times, and we love you daily. Congratulations, niece and nephew.
just take Bailey's. Yeah. Yep. Can I have that? Thank you. This evening, Bailey and Shane are sealing their vows to each other with the exchange of rings. Their circular shape evokes Shane and Bailey's unending commitment to one another. I give you this ring to wear with love and joy. I give you this ring to wear with love and joy. As a ring has no end. As a ring has no end. Neither shall my love for you. Neither shall my love for you. I choose you to be my wife. I choose you to be my wife. This day and forevermore. This day and forevermore. <laughs> Repeat after me, Bay. I give you this ring to wear with love and joy. I give you this ring to wear with love and joy. As a ring has no end. As a ring has no end. Neither shall my love for you. Neither shall my love for you. I choose you to be my husband. I choose you to be my husband. This day and forevermore. This day and forevermore. Bailey once shared with me that someone very special to her repeatedly told her through the years that you can't love someone until you love yourself. Well, I'm thinking she's found love in herself as the love she has for Shane and Shane for Bailey radiates all around. Continue to love yourself and others by surrounding yourselves with positive people and energy. Remember, good days give happiness, bad days give experience, the worst days give lessons, and the best days give memories. May today be one of the best memories of your lives. And now, As your honored officiant, by the power vested in me and by the state of Massachusetts, I now pronounce you husband and wife. And you may kiss the <laughs> Everybody's asking me I tell them that you're just a picture in a frame. I dissolve with the salt on your skin I know that we shouldn't be doing this so low Focus on my tone Feel your heartbeat stutter in slow mo Breathe in
off the books now, Shane. It's all yours. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. I, I, I can't thank you enough, um, both sides of the family. And, you know, Bailey, you know, I don't... So I'm, I'm, the, I'm the father of the bride, if you didn't know. Uh, yeah, now you know. So if you don't know me, I'm, I'm a bit of a talker, but, you know, some people think that, you know, I'm, I'm shy, but I'm really not. Um, but this, is, this has actually been a, a, an um, unbelievable couple days. Um, and I will tell you, that band's name just puts a name on it because been, I've been a hot mess for the last two days. Uh, it's been a very emotional time, but a really awesome time. And um, I love my daughter very much, and I love Shane. Um, I couldn't ask for anything better. Love you guys. Um, so I put together a little bit of a speech, and I, I think I'm going to read some of it. But... Um, I'll probably forget half of it. Yeah, I got them. I got the Magoo glasses. No one gets it. My college, buddy, my college, buddy, my college buddies are probably laughing their asses off right now. All right. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm John Morgan. I'm father of the bride. This is my beautiful wife, Carol Morgan, the mother of the bride. And this is my handsome son, Nick Morgan, Bailey's brother. And Bailey doesn't need to be introduced. Um, thanks again, everybody, for coming. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to mention a couple people, but uh, this, this celebration has been very special for Bailey and I, and now Shane. And it's been, a, like I said, it's been an emotional roller coaster for me for the last couple of days and been kind of a, a big baby. But uh, I wanted to say uh, right up front, uh, Bailey's college friend, Gracie, 
came all the way out from San Diego with her mother, with her mother Laura, and they've been here enjoying Boston for the last three days. There they are over there. Yeah, she's in the bathroom. Okay, <laughs> Laura, thank you very much for coming out with your daughter. It's been a pleasure meeting you, and I know Bailey thinks the world of Gracie, and so happy to have you guys here. Um, also, uh, my nephew Chris Morgan is here with his new fiance, or his fiance, uh, Brittany. And um, thanks for coming out. Love you. And um, everybody else that you know hopped on trains, planes, and automobiles to come here today, I really appreciate it. So I want to give a little bit of thanks to Lois and Mike. Um, I, I can't tell you how much I love your son. I, I, I truly mean that. Otherwise, I'd tell you. <laughs> uh, I can't find anything wrong with the kid. I mean, literally, I had him checked out. <laughs> um, and thank you last night for that beautiful rehearsal dinner. That was an awesome mixer. Nice time. So I'm going to just kind of take this down kind of memory lane and, and um, start out with Shane and Bailey. This is to you two. Um, start from the beginning. So Bailey and Shane met at a mixer at Assumption College. And they've been dating probably about four years. And I could tell at this point that it was getting serious. It wasn't puppy love anymore, you know. It, Bailey was going down to Shane's, and then they'd switch. They'd, they'd alternate weekends. And it was every weekend. And God forbid if Shane had to come to our house for two weekends in a row. It was like we had to do the switch. It was, nope, last weekend was my weekend, and we're going to your house next weekend. So I kind of kind of read into that, and I was like, you know what? These guys are uh, getting pretty serious. And then what ended up taking place is um, Shane, Shane and Bailey ended up moving down, living with Mike and Lois uh, for, I don't know, a couple of years type of thing. And um, it, it, they finally, finally broke out in a year ago. I think it's been about a year now. And they live in Norwood. And they have a one-bedroom apartment. And um, i just kind of give you a background on the, the, the two of them. Um, <laughs> bang, this summer, we had an a, a awesome party, another party down in uh, Falmouth. And uh, Shane proposed to Bailey on the beach in Falmouth. And it was awesome. Uh, lots of steak tips had by everybody, and uh, good times for everybody. Um, that's where I'm getting lost here. Anyways, the engagement party was great, and, and I'm overjoyed and, uh, that you both found true love. I'm so excited for both of you. Shane, thank you for loving Bailey from the bottom of my heart. And, and, and thank you. Now, uh, Bailey, um, I can't... I think I'm going to do this without crying. Uh, how proud I am to have you as this loving person as my daughter. Um, I can't, can't say it enough. Um, for those that don't know, Bailey was a, a preemie. She was uh, three pounds, 10 ounces when she came into this world. And um, she grabbed our hearts right from the beginning. For those who know Bailey, she, uh, she's always had the control right from the start. <laughs> um, yeah, so wonderful, wonderful uh, gal that uh, we were lucky to have. And, um, you know, the, the qualities that come out when I think about Bailey are loving, funny, considerate, kind, and, yes, persistent. Um, very persistent. And uh, I, the new name that came to me when you guys were getting engaged and everything was uh, Bay Benja. So, so I'm so proud of you. I love you. I'm so happy you found someone that truly loves you, believes in you, and will treat you well. Thanks, Shane. Um, so some of the memories that we have as, as, a, as a family, um, you know, Bailey and, and my family and, and Shane now involved, but to Bailey, it was the summers with Grandma and Bumpa at Cottage in West Yarmouth on Cape Cod. Those were great days when you were younger. Summers in Gloucester at Dennis and Jan's Cottage. Um, before they built the Morgan Inn. Uh, <laughs> Good Harbor Beach, building sand castles, playing on the beach, uh, summer vacations up to uh, Vermont, Stowe, Vermont, silly times, like we're riding back from dinner one night on our bikes, on the bike path, and I got whacked in the face by a bat. <laughs> just, just things like that. Those are the fond memories that I have of us. Shane, you're the best. 
Your ace is, honestly, I, I couldn't be more happy than to have you as my new son, son-in-law. Um, believe me, it, it's a crazy world out these days, and you're, uh, you're a great guy. Shane comes from a wonderful family from Coventry, Rhode Island. You can clearly tell. Yeah, Coventry. I used to go down there, and I had a microfiche account down there, Coventry Credit Union. There was nothing there when I went down there. Now it's a, now it's a city. Uh, but anyways, um, those are my things here. Where am I? Uh, there we go. Oh, yeah. So Shane's from Coventry. He's clearly a handsome man. I mean, can't take anything away from what he, you know, it's debatable. <laughs> what I love about Shane when I first met him was his, he's, he's got Catholic values. He's educated by the nuns. <laughs> he went to Catholic high school at Bishop Hendricks down in, down in Rhode Island. He also went to Assumption College, which is a Catholic nun-taught school. Mary and Bailey can speak up for that. Um, Anyways, just kind of a little joke in there. <laughs> Ice hockey and golf, sports, Morgan's all love that. We had that right in place right at the beginning. You fit right in from the beginning. I just had to kind of take it down that lane a little bit. Was, when I first met Shane, he was very young and, and quiet. And I'd sit in a room with him, like in a TV room watching sports, and I just waited out. How long is it going to take for this kid to say something? And you know, you know that you know that situation when you're new to a family and you're trying to impress the you know the father or your girlfriend and I mean, nothing. I'm like, finally, I'm like, all right. So I I, I spoke up and you know, I said, hey, and what do you think of the game and everything? Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> but honest to God, I mean, so then we have these uh, Morgan get-togethers that we used to, we still doing them, but we did them for a long time down at Legal Seafood in the Seaport district. We celebrate all our birthdays. We have like everybody's birthday except for Dennis and I, I think, in August and September. So we go down there and we, we have a, a nice time for ourselves. And um, so Shane, we order cocktails and get some, you know, uh, oyster Rockefellers and, you know, they come and we eat them and when we're still hungry, let's get some more. So I noticed that after Shane has a couple sips of beer, that he talks like the old FedEx guy. Remember that FedEx commercial? <laughs> And he's like, hey, stuffies, stuffies, because I, I don't even know what a stuffy is. You know, oysters on the half shell. He's like, yeah, we're going to get more stuffies. Stuffies all around. <laughs> and hey, the boy, I know it. He's coming over and he's grabbing me. And he's going, bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> so that's, that, was the, that was one of the nights that really stuck out for me. I was like, all right, this kid is awesome. <laughs> Liquid courage does a lot. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm kind of running on here, but. So I wanted to give it a little bit of uh, words of wisdom. And I love this, I love this saying, and it's kind of corny, but a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I just love that saying. I, you can read into whatever you want, but I, you know. What it really means is that you know, the things you already have are more important than the things you might have in the future. So remember, bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. I love that saying. Uh, so always, always be different, but stay truthful and be good to each other. Um, there, there are many, you know, landmark moments in our lives, and I think this one tonight it, it kicks off your marriage and your relationship, um, and the unforgettable moments that you guys have had together. I wish you many, many more. Um, you know, Bailey, I, as you know, I, I nicknamed my Bay Benjo when when things got really serious, and I could tell has been the light of my. <laughs> has been the light of my life for 27 years, and today I hand her over to Shane. And I know you'll do it right. I know he will love her and cherish her with every bit as much as I do. To a happy and healthy life full of endless love and laughter. And uh, now I'd like to make a toast um, to the new couple, Bailey and Shane Benjamin. Make, yeah, yeah, baby. Get my Magoo glasses going here. May God always be in your lives. May the road you choose be smooth. May you always have all that you need to be happy. And may your life together be as sweet as your love is today. Congratulations. I love you guys both. Ladies and gentlemen, our father of the bride. How about a round of applause?
All right, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Shane's brother and his best man. And um, for the last couple of weeks, I've really been trying to figure out uh, what I'm going to say for him. And um, I've been trying to find that perfect story. Um, so to start this off, I want to talk about this time uh, Shane spilled hot chowder all over his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> so I never I know what everybody's thinking right now. Is there irreversible damage right now? And I'm not sure. I have no idea how bad it is still to this day. We were kids and all I can remember is screaming and skin peeling and parents helping him out, okay? So You'd have to ask somebody else. I don't know what it looks like, but yeah, it's pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> On a uh, more serious night, a ser more serious note, um, <laughs> uh, me and my brother won't, weren't more weren't like your normal brothers. Uh, we weren't always fighting. We weren't, you know, fist fighting and screaming at each other. The most we ever really fought was me calling him a dick every once in a while. Because if you know Shane, you know it's you know it's true. <laughs> Um, but the thing we normally would do together, and I feel like it was really our thing, was um, knee hockey. And we used to play every night. We played seven game series down in the basement. We had a whole room dedicated for it. Um, we'd set the whole rink up, and Shane would uh, try to snipe on me while I was playing goalie. And um, we used to have the old iPad hooked up to a big speaker. And as soon as Shane would score a goal, he'd run across the room, turn it on, and it would be the Bruins goal horn going Bang, across the whole room. <laughs> and um, I'm sure my parents loved that because if we went through the whole house, we had it as loud as you possibly could. Um, <laughs> so that was just one of the things that I just, I don't know, I, I do miss that we won't have the opportunity to really do again, but who knows, maybe there'll be a couple new recruits coming in the next few years that we'll both get to play with. <laughs> It, it truly is an honor to be here as his best man and to know that we have this bond. And uh, you mean the world to me, so I'm just so happy to be here tonight. Um, for, for Bailey, uh, you know, they've been together for eight years now. And um, I feel like really I got to know her. At the beginning of their relationship, I was in high school, and then they were in college, so I didn't see her a whole lot. And then I was in college, and they were out of college now, so they were living back at our house and back in Mass, and um, I just, if, once COVID hit, I, she was going to grad school, and I had now been taken out of college because of COVID, and I really felt like it was the first time I really, truly got to know her. I knew her before, but it was the closest we have ever been to each other. She um, lived with us for, probably, I guess, a couple years or whatever it ended up being, and... <laughs> um, <laughs> COVID's been like six years at this point. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> it was maybe a little longer than it should have been. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but uh, it was the first time in my life that I felt like I had a sister. And um, Shane filled that, uh, that uh, role a few times in his life. But, uh, if you've ever seen Shane try to pick out an outfit, it's probably an hour of him trying to figure it out. So you, you'd, it's honestly, Bailey would be downstairs first and Shane would still be up there figuring out what he's wearing. The other thing too is this kid, <laughs> this kid would be in my, uh, <laughs> he'd be in my closet taking my clothes. As soon as I take one of his shirts, he'd flip out. It would be the biggest issue in the world, so. Yeah, yeah, she, Bailey would tell me, go grab one of your brother's shirts, they're nice. <laughs> so, um, it just, I, it's the first time in my life I felt like I had a sister, and uh, it's, it just was truly, it was really important time for me, and uh, it's the first time I really felt like these two right here were going to be forever, and um, That, sorry, that pollen's a bitch. Um, <laughs> uh, what? 
Yeah. Um, I just love these two so much. Um, you saw me during the ceremony. I couldn't. I thought I was going to be good to keep it together. And once that music was playing, I saw Bailey walking down the aisle. It just, it really, it, it's, this is an awesome night for me. And I know a, a big moment for both of them. And I'm just so happy to share it as uh, my brother's best man. So I was going to have his do a cheers, but I know Mary's up next. So I'll let her take that away at the end of hers. And uh, thank you guys so much for being here. That's our best man, Cam, ladies and gentlemen. That pollen's got me too, brother. Don't feel bad. Hi, everybody. I'm Mary. I'm Bailey's maid of honor. I just want to start by thanking Lois and Mike for a beautiful rehearsal dinner last night and John and Carol for this incredible wedding celebration. Look at this. I am so grateful to be part of such a special day. I'd like to take everyone back to a night I had in 2015 when I found myself at Assumption College's famous late-night hangout spot, Chuck's. Now, I myself didn't actually go to Assumption, so you may wonder why I was there that evening. Well, truth be told, I was visiting an ex-boyfriend, but that's neither here nor there, because it was on that night that I ran into this girl, dressed in the nines in her full lacrosse uniform. I remember thinking to myself, wow, this girl looks so cool and she's on the lacrosse team, she must be so athletic. I think we can all agree that the words, don't judge a book by its cover, have never been so true. <laughs> and since then, from nights in Young Hall and T1, to when I burned Bailey with a steamer, spring formals, buckets at the Boynton, drinks at Leeds, pup cup, shopping trips to severe po food poisoning on Valentine's Day, I've truly found a best friend since that night at Chuck's. Now fast forward a few years, and I'll never forget one specific night, the summer after college graduation. Bailey and I were staying in Cambridge, heading into the city for the Zac Brown Band concert at Fenway. After a couple of cocktails and a generous helping of chicken fingers, Bailey told me she was going to marry Shane. I'll admit, I also had a few cocktails at this point, so I don't completely remember how I resp responded to her proclaiming Sweeping proclamation. Oops, sorry. But knowing how we are together, I am sure it was something along the lines of, yeah, Bailey, no, duh. Now hurry up and call an Uber. We are so late. <laughs> and in, even in retrospect, that moment somehow wasn't the most memorable part of the night. Bailey and I actually got locked in our cab later that night and found ourselves taking selfies with the Boston Sausage guys. But that, those stories are for another time. So this guy Bailey knew she was going to marry. Shane, I couldn't have asked for a better partner for my best friend. I have watched you love Bailey nonstop from the moment I first saw you two together. I've seen how you look at her, appreciate her, and understand her. Oh, and how you put up their excessive cleaning habits. <laughs> Your sweet gestures and acts of selflessness never go unnoticed. Honestly, seeing the way you treated Bailey early on completely changed my outlook on dating and certainly raised my standards for who I was looking for. Thank you for loving our favorite girl and always putting her first. <laughs> and I'll never forget the moment Shane told me he was going to propose to Bailey. I couldn't help but think it's about damn time. <laughs> no, but jokes aside, it was truly the most exciting moment. I also wish Shane hadn't told me he was doing it because I also remember thinking August is so far away. I don't want to wait that long, but I persevered, and after many weeks of planning, the engagement day did eventually come. And for those of you who may not know, Bailey takes forever, forever to get ready. I'm not talking an hour. No, we're more in the two to three hour range on a good day. And of course, I was given the job of keeping her on a timeline and getting her out of the house. Meanwhile, I had to deal with the secondary stress of my fiance holding onto the ring for Shane and him needing to bring it to the beach. Needless to say, I was a wreck, maybe even more nervous than Shane. Bailey, despite what Shane and Will may think, wedding planning together was a joy that I never wanted to end. I'm really going to miss my daily FaceTimes with a sister I never had. Look at this wedding. It is absolutely breathtaking, and you most make the most beautiful bride. Hey. <laughs> And in closing, 
I just want to say how lucky I feel to have met both Bailey and Shane while we are in college. I've had a front row seat to watch this amazing relationship grow from a college romance to a strong love-filled partnership. You both work so unbelievably well together, and your dedication to this relationship is so inspiring. You show everyone else how it's done. I love you both so much. Now, if you could all join me and raise a glass to Mr. and Mrs. Benjamin, let the adventure begin. Ladies and gentlemen, our maid of honor, Mary. At this time, we invite everybody to sit back and relax. Dinner's going to be out Legendary, shortly. We're going to play some more music. We could be for legends etched in the stone, forever on thrones. Histories made in the moments. Heroes collide. It's all on the line with our backs against the wall. We came to fight. Yeah, we'll be remembered for this. We came to fight. 